Well, just like the title of the video said, we are going to try and tame the beast. And what's the beast? It's this Marlin Trapper 4570. And we're gonna see if any one of these three muzzle devices are, are gonna help mitigate the recoil of this otherwise fantastic little gun. And now, what are these two guys doing here? This, of course, is the Marlin Guide Gun. It's here for two reasons. We'll talk about that in a minute. And, uh, and then we've got my, you haven't seen this in a long time, my very big, heavy, long-barreled, historic design from John Moses Browning, Winchester 1886, also in 4570. And we're going to compare, it's a promise I made to you guys a long time ago, and we are going to compare muzzle velocity between the 26-inch barrel 1886, the 19-inch barrel guide gun, and the 16-inch barrel trapper. So we've got lots to do. Let's get started. And we've got two, uh, two different amp kinds of ammo we're going to shoot today. These are hand loads. They're topped with a 405 grain um, cast performance wide flat or long flat nose gas check bullet. And we've got the Grizzly Plus P 4570 wide long nose gas check, uh, wide long nose gas check also. And I'm pretty darn sure that these two rounds, these are hand loads right here. And this is the factory ammo from Grizzly. And I'm pretty sure it's the same bullet. And if you didn't know, Grizzly actually bought cast performance, I believe some time ago. So it makes sense that they'd be shooting the same round. But let's get started. Oh, and by the way, did you notice my little channel sign? I think that's really cool. I got that from Jeremy over at Lever Guns 50. Um, he made an impression with his 5110 and uh, made that sign for me. And if you'd like to have one, you can contact Jeremy through his uh, channel page and uh, order one for yourself. I think it's pretty cool. Let's, let's just see if we can't wake up some of the some of the steel targets out there. Without a muzzle device. And of course the muzzle devices I'm talking about are just, are just muzzle brakes to tame the recoil. All right, one warmed up. Let's try this guide gun. We'll just shoot a couple of rounds through it, and then we'll then I'll introduce you to the. A lot of you guys are new to the channel. I'll introduce you to this 1886. And this was the first gun that I bought. Um, for the channel. I think I bought it in, um, I can't remember, it's been almost three years ago that I bought this gun. And, uh, and it is a beautiful gun. I'll give you a close-up look right here. And I think it fits in nicely from a historic perspective with these Marlins. It just happens to be a little bit older design. But it does have a 26 inch octagonal barrel and it weighs over 10 pounds, but these two guys are around seven pounds. So uh, for, I have a big advantage when it comes to recoil, a weight advantage and a barrel length advantage. So recoil is not really a problem with this gun until you lay down on a bench and try to shoot it. And <laughs> it just hurts.
bust that jug down there on the silhouette target. Oh, sweet. <laughs> Couple more. All right, we've got all three guns warmed up. Now let's take a close look at the velocity difference between these, and then we'll start talking about recoil. Real quick, I mentioned there were two things about this guide gun that I wanted to talk about. Number one is gonna be the velocity numbers, which we'll cover here in about 15 or 20 seconds. But if you watched an earlier video of mine, you know that there was a problem with this guide gun, and it was that the hammer was interfering with the bottom of the bolt. And it should be free once the bolt clears the, um, the hammer with this bump. It should be no contact there. But there was, and Ruger fixed it. But let's take a close look at this guy. And you'll see now that with the new hammer, there's daylight between the bolt and the hammer. Okay, so let's talk about those velocities. And um, sorry for being so late. But uh, I have some, a cheat sheet here while I play, play the video. But I shot, um, I shot just two shot groups and it was in the interest of saving money and ammo. And uh, this isn't intended to be a definitive test. And so I figure a two shot average is gonna be enough just to cover what I was trying, the points I was trying to make. And so I shot two rounds through the trapper of my hand loads and I got uh, with two shots of the hand loads, I got a 1,565 foot per second average. And uh, the guide gun gave me a two-shot average of 1,581 feet per second. That is a 16 foot per second increase over the trapper. And believe me, that number, 16 feet per second, is lost in the noise. And so I would call these two velocities out of these two guns uh, functionally the same. Then I shot the uh, 1886 with the hand loads. I got a two shot average of 1,731 feet per second. That was a significant increase of 150 feet per second. So the extra seven inches of barrel length from 19 to 26 gave us a pretty good boost with the hand loads. And then I did the same thing with the Grizzly Plus P 405 grain bullets, same as my hand loads, as I said earlier. And uh, with the uh, two-shot average with the trapper, I got uh, 1,906 feet per second. That was a 341 foot per second increase over the hand loads. So if you think plus P 4570 doesn't mean much, I'm telling you, it means a lot, both in velocity and also recoil. And then I did a two-shot average with the guide gun and got a 1,973 feet per second two-shot average. That was a 67 foot per second increased. I think increase, I think that's actually a measurable number. And so with the uh, plus PMO, we did get a, um, uh, and I don't know, I didn't do the percentages. I'll let you guys tell me in the comments, but uh, we did get a measurable increase in velocity. And then with the 26 inch barrel 1886, we got a two shot average of 2,060 feet per second. That was 80, an 87 foot, uh, feet per second increase over the guide gun. So hand loads to plus P. Big difference in recoil, in, um, in muzzle velocity as well as recoil. Now let's talk about the, let me put my notes up, and let's talk about the muzzle devices that we're gonna, that we're gonna test. And I'm only going to test one gun, and that's going to be the Trapper, because it has the shortest barrel, it's the lightest gun, and I can tell you from my experience, it has the most personality. Okay, we do have three muzzle brakes we're going to test on the Trapper. One is going to be the Recon from Grizzly Gunworks. It's a screw-on muzzle brake. It's got two bolts on it to clamp once you get it timed. And these two uh, bolts pinch down, really lock it in place on the muzzle. We have another one from Grizzly Gunworks. This is the DEFCON Lite, and uh, it also is a screw-on. It's much smaller, and it has a, a nut that uh, locks it in place once you get it timed on the end of the muzzle. And then we have the beautiful and diminutive Comet muzzle brake from Ranger Point Precision. This guy just screws on, and it doesn't need to be timed because it doesn't matter 
where it locks on the end of your gun. But it is sized perfectly for the end of the of the uh, Marlin Trapper. This guy says it reduces uh, reduces recoil by 60%. The DEFCON light says it reduces recoil. This is from Grizzly Gunworks, of course. It says it reduces recoil by 70%. Even though it's smaller, 70%. And the uh, Ranger Point Comet muzzle brake advertises a 25% reduction in recoil. And with that said, I'm going to set up the slow motion camera. I'm going to shoot one round without the muzzle brake, and then I'm going to shoot another round with the muzzle brake. I'll uh, set those two images. I've done this before. I'll set those two images over top of one another with some grid lines, some reference lines, and we'll be able to see how much recoil reduction there was with and without. And then once we have gone through all three, we'll compare, this, do the same thing, and I'll superimpose the uh, different the different recoil images of all three devices on top of one another so you can see what what uh, works the best and uh, with that said let's get started you haven't already noticed there is a uh, water-filled pumpkin down there and so we're going to finish out the video here in just a minute with one shot and uh, I used up all of my grizzly ammo I'd really wanted to put one of those hard cast wide long nose gas check bullets through that uh, through that pumpkin but I used them all up just catching the super slow-mo but I do have a 350 grain Hornady a jacketed bullet round nose flat point and fairly full of powder, so we'll shoot it with that and um, we'll get a reaction anyway. But you guys and girls have already seen the uh, footage with the grid lines and uh, the reference lines, and so you already know how things kind of lined up. But I'll give you my impression without the benefit of that. And I just say, number one, this little gun right here with the uh, Grizzly Plus P, it kicks um, pretty stout. The other uh, thing I noticed is that the uh, Comet muzzle brake, it looks fantastic. And does it seem to mitigate recoil? It does. It also spits out gases all the way around. And so you're gonna have some blowback down here that you don't have with the other two muzzle devices, which only blow out to the top and the sides. And, um, and so the Comet muzzle brake, it helped a little bit and, uh, and it sure does look nice. So if you just want a little bit of help, with recoil and you don't want to affect the uh, look particularly of the gun and the comment muzzle brake from ranger point precision looks uh, is a good option just be careful shooting it from the vent bench because it does blow hot gases at high velocity down on your bench and anything there is going to come back at you and so uh, be very careful what about the uh, the two uh, grizzly gunworks muzzle brakes well number one the uh, Recon is a massive, <laughs> gaudy, tank-looking device, and, um, and I don't think I would put one on the front of any of my lever guns ever. But the uh, DEFCON 1 Lite is a nice compromise between a giant tank-like device on the end of your uh, short, diminutive uh, 1895 Marlin, a good compromise between the DEFCON light or the uh, Recon and the Ranger Point Precision Comet muzzle brake. So, if you really want to have one and you don't want that downward blast, then the DEFCON one light from Grizzly Gunworks might be a great choice. Now, let's address that pumpkin.
Well, that was a little bit uh, underwhelming. 